Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to introduce you guys to Audacity and show you basically everything that you need to know to get started with recording and editing audio inside of the program. So Audacity is almost strictly a program for recording and editing audio, and as such the first thing you're going to want to know is how do you select a microphone in order to record and how do you import audio if you are actually going to be editing an external file. So the section for choosing your microphone is right here where you see the little icon for a microphone. If you have a microphone plugged in, you can click on the drop down list and select the device that you want to record from. If for some reason you don't see the device and for instance you're running on Windows, make sure that it actually shows up in the Windows settings or same for Mac and Linux as well and verify that your computer is in fact recognizing the audio device. You can also check the device manager by going to the search bar, typing in device manager and making sure that the device shows up there as well. Now, if you happen to be wanting to import an external file, you can go up to file and then import audio and you can either locate a completed audio file such as a mp4 file or a .wav or .ogg as well. Or if you have other previously edited or saved Audacity projects, you can find them represented by the .aup extension. And if you load up an audio file, it should enter the timeline similar to this little bit that I've recorded with my microphone before the start of this video. So in addition to selecting a microphone, you can also choose an output device. So whatever you want to be listening back to your audio on, in this case, I have a headset selected, which is usually a good option. You can select those devices from this drop down menu, same way as a microphone. And before you start recording or listening back to your audio, you may want to adjust the microphone volume. You can do that with this slider up here at the top right. You can see that it's set to 0.9 right now out of a maximum of 1.0. So if I want the audio coming in to be quieter or louder, I can just move that slider. Now note that when you do this, it's actually adjusting the volume setting for the entire computer for that audio device. So you can see in the bottom right hand corner, it says now speakers USB 50% that corresponds with whatever we set up here. So if we go down here and look at it again, you can see that without touching the system settings, it's been updated there as well. So it's going to be the same volume. And that also applies to the microphone volume as well. So if I come into Windows settings and I check out the device properties for the microphone, you can see it's set to 90 here. But if I hit back and then I adjust this microphone setting, then you can see that the microphone volume has been updated here as well. So let's talk about the super basics of recording. Uh, there's two hotkeys you really want to know about, and that's R and Shift R. With R, you are going to be writing to the track that you have currently selected. So you can see with this yellow box that we are currently selecting this first audio track. And wherever you left click to move the timeline cursor, and you'll get this black line to indicate it, is where the audio is going to be recording from. So now if I hit R on the keyboard, it is going to start recording from the final point that is currently recorded to in this timeline. So you can see right here about eight and a half seconds. That's where it's going to start recording from. I'll go ahead and hit R now. So you can see it continues from the already existing audio and just writes to that. Note that it doesn't record from where my timeline cursor is, but the end of the current audio track. So your second option if you want to write to a brand new audio track is to hit Shift R now. So you can see it continues. And if you want to adjust the output volume for your currently selected audio device, you can go up here to the top right and you can adjust this playback volume slider. So your second option for recording audio is going to be to use Shift R. So if I hit Shift R right now, it's going to be writing to a new audio track and it starts that position from the exact point in the timeline where uh, I had the cursor set to. You also notice that when you're writing to a new track, but there's audio information on other tracks, then as long as you don't have your microphone muted, it's also going to be playing back those other audio tracks to the output device. So you might want to be careful about that if that bothers you. You can either mute an audio track so it doesn't interfere with your recording, or you can mute your audio output or change it to an audio output device you're not going to be listening to. So now I would like to show you two interesting ways of playing back your audio rather than going to the start of the audio clip and hitting play for the entire track. If you want to quickly listen back to a part of your audio, such as a one second period, you can left click at this point above the timeline and drag this arrow out to the starting or ending point and the audio will play back for that time frame. Audio track now. And it's, so that's a way that you can quickly listen back to a select part of your audio and see if it's good or not and that maybe if you need to be record or edit it. So a second option that I want to show you is to use scrubbing and seeking for your audio. So rather than having to select part of your audio and hit the space bar, 
or the play button over here, quick video, like so, and then space to stop it. What you can do uh, to just be able to play back your audio while moving around your cursor is to go up to the transport menu and then choose scrubbing and either scrub or seek. So the difference is that scrub is going to move in the direction that your cursor is with regards to wherever this timeline cursor is, but seek is going to jump uh, large portions of your audio to get very close to wherever your cursor is at the time. So basically, if you move your cursor really far, Scrub will play back all of the information until it reaches your mouse cursor. But if you use Seek and you jump ahead, the Seek is going to move very close to your mouse cursor and just play that little bit back. So let's do Scrub initially. So you can see a, that it is uh, going to be following my desk. cursor. And it also goes in reverse as well. Video. And with Seek, it will jump fast yeah, ahead so to catch up with wherever our mouse cursor is, which could be a lot more useful than the basic scrubbing if you plan on jumping ahead one minute or so at a time. So why would you even use scrubbing or seeking to begin with? Well, it's to play back the audio so that you can hear if it sounds correctly. Maybe you catch yourself in a voiceover recording lots of ums or so type sounds. And this can be one method for quickly identifying those without having to rely on the play button. Yeah. So I've already shown you one way to create a new audio track by hitting shift R to record to a new audio track. But here's another option. You can go up to the tracks menu, go to add new, and then choose either mono track for a track that only has one channel audio, meaning it does not have left and right channels, but rather just one channel of audio, and a stereo track which is going to have left and right channels. So if for some reason you plan on speaker balancing your audio, either having one of the tracks come mostly out of the left speaker or the right speaker, probably more of a music thing, but you can control that on a stereo track by controlling this pan meter. So if you keep it in the center, it's going to come out equally from both sides of the speaker, but you can adjust that. So now let's talk a little bit about the tools you have available for editing your audio. So first off, the selection tool, you can see up here that it is selected by default. If you ever need to switch to it, you can use the shortcut F1. And and the idea here is that you can select part of your audio track for either cutting away or adding an effect to it. So the quickest way to cut away is going to be to use the cut tool, which is shortcut control X. I almost always do it by shortcut. So control X is going to cut away that dead audio information and everything to the right of the track is going to ripple over to the left. If you'd like the cut to not ripple anything from the right over to the left to fill in this void, you can instead go up to the edit menu and do remove special and then do a split cut. The shortcut for that, as you can see, is Control alt x so that removes it without rippling. So as you record your audio, you may want to raise or lower certain parts of it. Maybe, for instance, you have background music pulled into this project and you want it to go down so that the spoken audio can be heard better. So you have a really good tool for that called the Envelop Tool. So this is basically for raising and lowering the audio volumes, and it does so using a sort of control point. So if I left click here, you'll see that this little circle is put down there. And there's also white dots here at the top and bottom. Because we only have one point, whatever we set here for the envelope tool controls the audio for the entire track. And if we left click and pull this up, you can see that we're in a sense shrinking or expanding the audio volume. So the higher these bars go, the louder the audio is going to sound. So if I wanna make the audio very loud, I can left click somewhere in the middle here and pull it down in order to increase the volume. Or you can do the opposite. You can left click and bring it more into the center in order to decrease it. But one of the cool things about this tool is that you can add multiple control points. So if I left click here, I get a second set of points. And so we can compress the audio volume Volume at this point and going forward to be a different audio volume than the earlier points in this track. And we can also go over here and set a third point where maybe we keep it about the same, but then at our fourth point, we expand the audio back open again. So by setting these four control points at different levels, we can bring the audio down for a specific part of our audio track and then make it louder again. So let's go ahead and I'll hit F1 to switch to the selection tool. By the way, envelop tool is F2 on the keyboard. So let's go ahead and play that back. I muted track one so that doesn't get in the way. The timeline where uh, I had the cursor set to. So it doesn't write. Okay, and hopefully you could see the, that the audio was brought down about 10 or 12 decibels for this part, uh, which could be really useful if you need to fade something out or in. So there is a totally different way of lowering some of the noise down for a different purpose. So noise reduction, if you want to move some of the background noise out of your audio entirely, then what you can do is use the selection tool and grab some of the background noise from your video. But make sure that when you do this, that there's no spoken audio. If you're doing a voiceover recording, basically only try to pick up the background noise. So I'll play it back here. 
And you can hear, especially with that car honking, that there's quite a lot there. So if we go to effect and then noise reduction, we can use get noise profile in order to let Audacity know roughly what we're considering to be background noise. And now we can select this audio clip and go back up to effect and noise reduction again. And uh, you can customize how much it should reduce the noise reduction, how sensitive you want it to be. More sensitive is generally gonna pick up more background noise. But if you make it too sensitive, it might actually start to remove some of the audio you wanna keep. So uh, be a little careful about that. And then uh, frequency smoothing I'm not entirely sure about that I've never actually modified that but you can hit preview in order to listen back to your audio with the noise reduction so let's go ahead and do that into a new audio track and it starts that position from the exact point in the timeline where Audacity seems to have done a pretty good job. So I'll go ahead and hit OK here and commit that. And what you should notice is that the timeline for that audio track has shifted a lot. Uh, generally, things get quieter, but what you really want to focus on is those areas where nothing is being spoken, where there would normally be a lot of background noise, and hopefully you'll see those roughly eliminated. If it doesn't remove all that background noise entirely, what you might need to do is move your microphone closer to you and lower the gain on your microphone uh, so that it's picking up less of that background noise to begin with. But the noise reduction tool there is really nice. So a similar tool if you're thinking of reverse is to actually take your audio and make it louder across the board. So that is the amplify tool. If you want to make sure that your audio can get close to the audio peak without actually going over it, then the amplify tool is going to be really handy for you. So if you go to effect and then amplify it's going to recommend how many decibels it should add to your current audio in order to bring your peak audio closer to the max but without going over now if you want to stay a little bit away from that peak max then you can actually set a new peak amplitude like negative one decibel and you'll see that the amplification will update to reflect that value you want your current peak to be at but generally speaking you can just use the default value of zero here and the automatically calculated value will be reflected there so now we can hit okay and the audio in your track is going to be amplified to be about as loud as it can be without starting to distort some of the audio by being too loud generally speaking this can be a handy tool if you happen to record your audio and it was too quiet by default and next we have the compressor which is going to try to take your audio and bring the different levels more in line with each other so if we go up to the effect menu and choose the compressor here the basic idea here here is that it's going to be taking the audio below the threshold and making it a little bit louder. So without really playing around with the settings of the compressor too much, we'll just go ahead and hit OK here. As a result, your quieter audio gets louder and your loud audio gets quieter. So this is a before and this is an after. You can see this part was above the threshold, so it became a little bit quieter. And then if we show the after, you can see it's quieter now. But everything else, like this section here, gets a little bit louder. And as a result, all of your audio is going to be more in line with each other. So without playing around with it too much, the threshold is probably going to be the main setting you're going to play around with. Uh, possibly the noise floor as well. I believe that that means that anything below that noise floor isn't really affected by the threshold because it's just considered random background noise and not important. But if you raise or lower the threshold, that's going to determine more of which parts get lowered in the volume and which ones get increased on the volume. One more thing to note about Audacity is that it can actually create a series of sound effects for you. For instance, one of the more useful ones would be to go to Generate and then go down to Rhythm Track. So by adding in a Rhythm Track, if you're recording music, this could help you keep the beat. And you can customize the beats per minute here to whatever the tempo should be for your track. You can also set how many beats per bar you want and similar functions. Let's go ahead and hit OK here. You'll see that it actually adds it in from wherever your timeline cursor is. Just like if you start recording to a new audio track, wherever the timeline cursor is, that's where it records from. So if you want it to be at the start, make sure that you click at the start so that it adds it in at zero seconds there. And if you go ahead and play back this audio track, it's just going to give you that ticking sound, same as if you have a metronome. So one last minor thing about controlling your individual audio tracks. You have settings over here on the left side, including the gain for your audio track. So if you want to take your entire audio track and make it louder, you can increase the gain. If you want to make it more quiet, you can decrease the gain as well. Now note that this doesn't directly affect the audio data in your track, but it's rather going to affect your playback volume or your export volume. And I probably mentioned it earlier, but if you're working on a stereo track and you want to control which speaker set it's going to be coming out of, then if you pan it to the left, it's going to come out of the left speaker. And if you pan it to the right, it's obviously going to come out of the right speaker or right speakers. 
So those are just a couple settings that you can do on your audio tracks. You can also click on audio track to do a drop down menu. So if you want to move tracks up on the list of audio tracks, you can do that. If, if you want to split a stereo track into multiple mono tracks, then you have that option there as well. A couple more quick settings. If you want to control the playback speed of your timeline, you can increase or decrease that here. Obviously, that is going to be set to 1.0 by default. And if you want to zoom in on your timeline or zoom out, you have these icons here. So we can control the zoom by either clicking on the icons or control one on the keyboard to zoom in or control three to zoom out. So without going into too much detail about every icon or setting inside of Audacity, I hope that I've given you guys a pretty good rough rundown of everything you need to know to get started with basic audio editing and recording inside of Audacity. So that's going to be it from me in this video. I've been Chris. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys in my future video content.